Hey gang, back with another video for you today. Guess what, I got Jessica here to do another video with me. How are you? Um, I'm excited to do this video on fragrances that I'm not familiar with. Yes, exciting fragrances. Focusing on pine, fir, and spruce. Love the idea of a pine forest. It is winter and I love it when it's cold outside. You're walking in and you're smelling the trees. And that's what we've got for you today. Top 20 list. So if you're curious to learn about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, this is Jessica. How are you today? Hey, it's good to be here again, still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you a fan of uh, pine and fir and spruce? And... I am. I love an aromatic fragrance. Which one is your favorite of those three? The pine? I think pine is my favorite, but kind of they all go hand in hand and they mm -hmm. kind of might remind you of one another. They do. We left off cypress as a note, but I have a separate video on cypress alone. Although there are a few fragrances here that do feature cypress as well because they're all kind of in that same ballpark. Cypress to me is more summery. I always associate pine, fir, and spruce with winter. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe because I like the smell in the winter time because there's a frosty smell about them. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go ahead and get started at the first with the first one. Uh, this is from the house of uh, Papillon Perfumery or Papillon Artisan Perfumes. It's spell 125. Now this one I bought uh, a couple years ago when it first came out. But as you can see, I haven't worn much of it. It is a very challenging fragrance and uh, it's animalic. It is. But it is pine with olibanum. There's ambergris, there's hemlock, sandalwood, ylang ylang. And in this case, it's the ambergris that's kind of very animalic for me. It does take on a bit of a marine touch as well, but there's smokiness in there from the uh, olibanum. Uh, it is definitely very piney, but very animalic. It, especially that first spray. It was, it's dried down a little bit now and getting more of that, that salty marine scent, but initially it has a punch of animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're moving on to Penhaligon's at number 19 with Sports Car Club. This is a fairly new fragrance. I actually really loved it's kind of like mentholatum kind of a mm. experience here. It's got eucalyptus. And whenever I see eucalyptus in the notes, it's going kind of like, uh, mentholatum to me, but it's got lots of pine in addition as well. There's ambroxan, there's musk, cypress, and pink pepper, but for some reason we're not getting a very strong smell with this one. At least Jessica's not. It's really soft. I can smell it's like a far away cool pine. A eucalyptus. It's basically eucalyptus. Yeah. No, yeah, it's eucalyptus with pine. There's also the cypress because they all have that kind of menthol mm -hmm. kind of a note, but for me it's the eucalyptus that's the strongest yeah. with that menthol it's very note. Soft. It's soft for you, huh? It's a little bit uh, a little bit syrupy too mm. you get that kind of a slight a thickness to it. Yeah, there is definitely that thickness to it, but it's a, it's a shame you're not smelling it that much. I don't get it. Yeah, that's why it's at number 19, I 19, guess. 19, yeah. So I left uh, Jessica to put the list together. I'm gonna kind of like either criticize her for where she put the, the fragrances or go along with her. So I think so far she's done fine, although I would have put the Penhaligons a little further ahead. But moving on to the House of Gallagher fragrances, it's Evergreen Dream, a type of uh, fougere fragrance that's definitely like a pine forest. And it features notes of pine with lavender. There's oak moss, galbanum, cedar, lime, patchouli, cashmere, and birch, and grapefruit. For me, I'm very sensitive to galbanum. Mm -hmm. It's got that bitter greenness in here. Mm -hmm. That's really, really nice. And then the lavender and the oak moss and definitely the pine. This is really good. Okay, so I'm gonna say at, it's, it's at 18 when, I init when we initially sprayed it. It has opened up quite a bit. Yeah. It is really, uh, you get a lot of that lavender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, more of that the lime, yeah, everything the grapefruit. So it's really lightened up. Initially, it's really heavy. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Gallagher fragrances tends to yeah. be really strong. It's an indie perfumer, and he likes his fragrances concentrated. So maybe it was a little too much for you. It certainly wasn't very cute when it was first sprayed, but okay. now that it's opened up, it's definitely getting the layers. Mm. Um, it's definitely beastly. I, I like it beastly, but then again, I would have put this up somewhere around number 10. Uh, it's a fougere in the end, but it, it's a pine fougere sort of a mm. thing, so that's why it's a little unique for a pine fragrance. Yeah. Moving on to a male targeted release. So far, everything's been unisex. We are going to the house of Montclair. It's Montclair Pour Homme with its very unique neon bottle. As you can see, this one. 
I think it's a decent offering for men. Um, it's definitely kind of that frosted snow because Montclair makes snow jackets or ski jackets so they kind of went with that theme of frosted and pine. They've got pine here, green notes, clary sage, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, and amber. You know, I know people that really like this. I've actually had some clients come in with, with when we did sniff sessions and they've actually ended up going and buying a full bottle. So there's fans of this one out there but for me it's a bit on the like mess. Yeah, and that's why it's at number 17, not because it's not a nice fragrance and the bottle is is over the top, but it's just because it's 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 not as special as say some other fragrances that we have here. Yeah, I agree. But at number 16, I'm a little disappointed this ended up at number 16 going to the house of Diptyque. It's Le Trois. I really really think this is a great fragrance. Uh, this is like pine forest at the church. So if you like the idea of this like pine forest smell, the pine trees or the fir trees next to like a church service, you're smelling the incense going, this is definitely the, the one for you. It's pine tree, myrrh, olibanum, spices, caraway, rosemary, and myrtle. What do you think of this? It, it is a beautiful fragrance. It's not, it doesn't really grip me one way or another though. Mm. It doesn't seem to be something that really just has either like a, a very strong emotion towards it. It's, it's like a nice incense. Okay. Okay. It would be a nice candle. Ah, mm -hmm. I think they might even have a candle that smells like this. Well, then I'm going to have to <laughs> get that candle. No, yeah, I think the pine is there, but I think the incensey resins notes are kind of overpowering the pine. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily fully smelling like a pine forest. But uh, I think it's a gorgeous fragrance. Le Trois at number 16, according to Jessica. I would have put that somewhere around the middle as well. Moving on to the house of uh, Goutal Paris or Annie Goutal with my very vintage bottle. It's Nuit Etoile. Uh, this is the feminine bottle. Mm -hmm. I also have the, the blue uh, male bottle as well. Mm -hmm. This is uh, kind of on the light side with mint and pine. There's also fir balsam. There's citron, immortel, orange, and angelica. I, I would agree with you on this one. Yeah. It's just very pleasant. It's nice. It's definitely something you would wear when it's warm outside because it's not very dense and heavy. Yeah, it's a very Goutal, um, you know, aromatic with that pine. Uh, I like the Goutal fragrances. I love this vintage bottle. I can't believe you have a vintage bottle like that, but it, should, it shouldn't surprise like me. Uh, yeah, I think Goutal doing a pine fragrance. Do they still sell this? It comes in the new bottle. Yes, it does. Uh, this is it smells great. If you like the idea of pine with mint, but it's a very dry mint, not the fresh mint, because in here I get dry mint. Mm -hmm. uh, you would like this one. So moving on to the house of uh, Terenzi, Tiziana Terenzi. It's ecstasy, and ecstasy. I would have put it up higher, uh, but. Uh, I think she might have a point because even though it's got a lot of pine here, there's a lot of rose in here as well with incense. So it's incense, spruce, pine tree, rose, amber, woody notes, styrax, patchouli, labdanum. You definitely get a jammy rose in here contrasted with the pine and the spruce. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You got a lot of that pine and the, a lot of that rose. Yeah, and the amber. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. It's definitely a Terenzi-like fragrance, right. but nobody really talks about this one. It's a very unique fragrance in that if you like rose, but with that kind of aromatic green pine spruce note. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like there'd be a lot of other ones that would take center stage before that one. Yeah. But I like that it's in this selection. It's definitely a great one. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very, very underrated. If you don't know Ecstasy, definitely check it out. I would actually put this somewhere around seven, but Ooh. that's just me. So moving on to the new company and its forest lungs. This one right here with a very interesting concept. Uh, it's a kind of fragrance apparently that would calm you if you're like overly stressed and things like that. And the idea of forest bathing comes to mind here as well, according to them. It's very, it's on the minimalistic side to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pine with vetiver, cedarwood, benzoin, patchouli, and bergamot. Your thoughts on this one? It smells like something a Veda would release. And I mean that in a complimentary way. Hmm. It smells something very natural. Uh, it's therapeutic. Very it's, therapeutic. It's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Spa kind of. Uh, 
It's clean. It smells like the best of each ingredient. Uh, very wearable. Yeah, it's woody. It does yeah. smell like a more of a woody pine where you're smelling the wood chips instead of like the aromatic green parts of the tree, but definitely pleasant. Yeah. I, 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 I'd say fine with this one where you put it. Oh, yeah. Number 13, the new company. All right, moving on to number 12, going to the house of imaginary authors. It's Cape Heartache, this one right here. This one's got to be on the list. You know, I left off a city of a city on fire, uh, and even though it does have a bit of a pininess, it's more burned smoky. This is definitely the pine forest with like, imagine walking through that pine forest and you come to a little bushes of strawberries growing on the ground and you can get the fragrance of the strawberries because it's got fir, strawberries, pine tree, woody notes, vanilla, and hemlock. Thoughts? This is really a, it's not my favorite, but I like how unique it is with the strawberry note. I think it's very unique and interesting and imaginative. I wouldn't have put strawberries with, with fir and pine. It works though. It does. Somehow he managed to make it so that you smell the, you smell the terpenic and you smell the fruit and they're not the same thing at this, you know, they're not blended into each other. I don't know why, but I have never mentioned this, but I get Little Red Riding Hood. In <laughs> Imagine Little Red Riding Hood ro running around in the forest before she runs into the big bad wolf. Oh, and this, there's some yeah. strawberries there because it's kind of a girliness but it's nothing but like this kind of like very forest like smell in there. This so. is in the innocent part of the story. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then moving on to Inica at number 11, it's Idlewild, another fougere pine fragrance. This one uh, is Inica's take on it. Uh, and we've ranked this one here at number 11. And I think I could see why because the uh, Gallagher fragrances is definitely on the beastlier side. And even though they're kind of mm -hmm. similar themes of fougere pine, this one's definitely a lot more subtle. And I think you can probably mm -hmm. appreciate it easier. So fir, cypress, rhubarb, grapefruit, tea, lavender, woodsy notes, artemisia, and cardamom. I think it's a great uh, masculine offering mm -hmm. from this house where the fragrances from this house are, house are usually feminine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, I love the smokiness in this one. And I do think that it is more subtle and I do, I do appreciate that. Um, but it still has the same intensity. Um, the rhubarb is a great addition. I don't re can't really pick it out individually, but I like rhubarb as a note. It mm. gives something very, what's the, what's the right adjective for it? Well, I was going to say like jelly fruits is jelly what I get, uh, what I get from rhubarb. Jelly fruits. Oh, okay. So for me, when I get rhubarb, I get the very tart part of it, like when it's before you add the sugar. Oh, the astringent part. Yes, astringent. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one. Would you wear this? I would, yeah. It's I, masculine. I will try it on, but yeah, I would wear this. I like masculine fragrances. Okay. Moving on to the house of Dasein or Dasein, it's uh, Winter Nights, this one right here at number 10. I would have actually put this one a little further up. Idlewild, I think, is at the right place. Mm. I've been a fan of Winter Nights because uh, it's just, I love the way it smells. It's created by Josh Meyer of Imaginary Authors. It's coastal forest, driftwood bonfire, cardamom tea, lavender, and musk, but definitely does have that kind of pine forest smell because it says coastal forest. I don't really get like a coastal smell though. What are your mm. thoughts? Bonfire, winter, cold winter bonfire. Yeah, there's uh, definitely smokiness there. There's a smokiness there. I've done a lot of bonfires in the winter, so this definitely has a winter nights oh, it does. memory to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely, yeah, winter nights is good. I've had this for years. I actually have a review on the channel. Go check it out. And I've done a video on the house recently. They mm -hmm. have three winter themed fragrances. It's winter, winter nights, and winter green. And you're gonna find winter on this list as well soon. But either way, it's design and it's uh, winter nights at number 10 and then moving on to number nine we're going to the house of Serge Lutens this one I had a difficult time with Jessica putting it at number nine it's Fia and Aigui one of my absolute favorite fragrances she put this at number nine I would have put it at number one or two yeah he almost stopped breathing <laughs> <laughs> um, this is uh, super delicious with pine, incense, with dried fruits, balsam fir, spices, bay laurel, and vetiver. But you know, it's beautiful. I know, and I've smelled this one because we, we you know, we don't sell Sergio Tan anymore. He doesn't sell in the U.S., but we have an old tester, and I've smelled this a number of times. And um, what can I say? It just, it again, it didn't, mm. you know, grip me as something that has that inner sense of satisfaction. Yeah. I think it's a, I love Serge Luten. Serge Luten was my first niche fragrance uh, purchase, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. 
so you just one just doesn't do it for you somehow and I think I sprayed it on it just somehow it just didn't do it um, that, not that it's not a masterpiece of a fragrance but you know I guess we're talking about emotion when we talk about perfume right so it's like art sometimes it just the connection doesn't happen yeah sometimes you don't connect with a fragrance mm -hmm. this one is just probably my favorite fragrance from this house in fact it's one of my all-time favorite fragrances period I just love the way it smells does it have a memory that it brings back for you not really. I don't know what it is, but it's 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 got this kind of like cozy, calming quality mm. about it. It's the winter. It's the cold. It's the smell of the trees. That reminds me of Christmas. The dried fruits we used to have during the winter months of holidays. The Christmas, the fresh Christmas tree. I don't know. Maybe that's there's a coziness about that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, Fia Nagui from the house of Serge Lutens at number nine. All right, moving on to the house of Bottega Veneta. It's Bottega Veneta Pour Homme. This is at number eight. I would have put this one further down the list, not, not up the list, but down the list near like 15, 16, 17. Uh, it is once again a very mass fragrance, but I think they've done a good job with this one. Yeah. They, they have done a good job. It kind of reminds me of the now discontinued Russian leather from Memo Paris. Um, sadly, that's off the list because mm. it is discontinued now, but this yeah. is pine, leather, fir, juniper, patchouli, bergamot, labdanum, clary sage, chili pepper. Yeah. Bottega Veneta, I think, is one of my favorite houses for commercial perfumes. I like their commercial perfumes. Okay. Also, that they're not everywhere, too. You know, kind of, do, do you, can you get them in the department stores or do you have to go to their boutique still? I know when, uh, when I used to go to Saks a lot, they used to sell the brand okay. there quite a bit, but I, uh, it's, I don't know, their new creative director has discontinued a lot of the fragrances. Mm -hmm. So I, I always thought this is going to get discontinued as well, but it's still selling. I see it. Yeah, this is definitely a very wearable. It has kind of a fashion chic element to mm. it. Okay. Um, it's not the most exciting fragrance, but if you compare this one to the Montclair, I think this one has a, is a lot more unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one definitely has more uniqueness, uh, the, the Bottega Veneta. And then moving on to the house of Comte de Garçon, this is Incense Zagorsk from the Incense series. It features a pretty prominent pine note with incense, birch, olibanum, cedar, hinoki, iris. Again, it smells like church, but you know, a church that's near the pine forest. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the, the, the actual green aromatic parts of the the pine, I get more of the wood part of it. Yeah, this one is interesting because of this whole incense series. I think it's usually Kyoto and Avignon people go for. Mm -hmm. So this one is maybe uh, more under the radar. But you know what? I have a lot of friends that say this smells like pencil shavings to them. Oh, because of the cedar and the hinoki, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to put this on the skin. Um, I think it's a very, it's a beautiful incense profile. Mm. I, I guess I would have put this around 11, but I'm fine with it being at 7. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the house of La Courie. This is Incendo. I recently featured it in my smokiest fragrances video. Here it is in the pine and fir fragrance video. This is incense, embers, fir balsam, pine, and sage. It smells like a forest fire. This one has gotten even better on the strip. This is a really good fragrance. Not a lot of knows, not a lot of people knows about this brand, La Courie. They're from, I believe, Tucson, Arizona, and this is definitely one of their mm. best fragrances. An indie house, just a beautiful, really smoky, woody fragrance. It smells like it would wear for a long time on the skin too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's very resinous. It's very resinous, yeah. Moving on to number five, going to the house of L'Artisan Parfumer, a fragrance created by Olivia Giacobetti. It's Fuda Absinthe, this one right here. You know, I'm a big fan of Wormwood, mm -hmm. licorice uh, anise. So this one takes pine and combines it with Wormwood along with balsam fir. There's star anise, incense, nutmeg, and angelica. Mm -hmm. What did you like about this that you put it at number five? When you first spray it, I did not get the the more uh, the anise, the nutmeg, the angelica. It was soft and a little mysterious and I just wanted to kind of highlight it because there was something a bit um, I think that my top ranking ones are on the lighter, fresher side, and perhaps the it's the Angelica highlights a lot of those otherwise very heavy notes, mm. brings it a bit more into a slightly kind of sweeter, but still has the 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 intensity of the pine and the wood. 
Okay. I don't know. This one to me is very fresh, very green, and of course very aromatic, but not necessarily your typical fresh fragrance that's all focusing on citruses with aromatics or something. Whereas this is more about the aromatics, less citruses, but very green and fresh for summertime. But mm -hmm. I think it, it works in the winter time as well. All right, and speaking of uh, fresh fragrances, moving on to the house of 4711 with their Aqua Colonia collection of fragrances, Wakening Woods of Scandinavia. This one right here, very fresh fragrance, but this one I think gets a lot of love in the community. Everybody seems to love it. It's got fir, olibanum, patchouli, rose, osmanthus, jasmine, bergamot, pink pepper, and coriander. A fragrance created by Geza Schoen of Eccentric Molecules. He's done a really great job with this one. What do you think about this? My first impressions was just like how fresh and pretty and wearable and, and uh, just um, overall kind of like a light, a mood lightener. Um, I can see the thread. Like of forest lungs? Yeah, like forest lungs. <laughs> like I'm breathing for the first time. On the strip with the dry down, it hasn't really done much. I think it's a very light fragrance. Mm -hmm. Probably isn't super long wearing. So I yeah, think, I think it's also linear. It's not changing much. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna get the you're gonna get that brightness at the beginning, and it's it's a beautiful opening. Yeah, I really do love this one. It's an easier wear. This is also perfect, like for something like an after shower. There's there's definitely the calming mm -hmm. feeling of like a forest. You you shower and then spray the stuff on. And oh, you've got yeah. all this great aromatic notes with some floral notes mixed in and some freshness. Oh yeah, great fragrance. This is Awakening Woods of Scandinavia. Moving on to number three, going to the house of Atelier Oblique. It's Moon Sai. This one right here. So this was a surprise for me. You put this at number three. What did you like about number three, Atelier Oblique Moon Sai? <laughs> what, what would you put it at? This one I would put around nine to 11. Oh, interesting. Yeah. For me, this one is not my favorite from the house. It's also very woody, like it, it, it leans very woods like mm -hmm. so it's not as exciting of a fragrance but mm. hey I mean everybody's got different tastes this is vetiver right. with oak moss there's pine there's patchouli leather coffee geranium floral notes papyrus and when we were testing it out earlier without even reading the notes I, t I kept telling Jessica I go I'm getting coffee from this loads of coffee there's coffee it's funny because I don't get too much of the coffee actually. Um, I like what an, a kind of an eclectic grouping of, of fragrance notes there are in there. Mm. Um, it's There's a lot going on and it's blended well. It, feel, it smells like a very modern, kind of like a cool fragrance, but it still has a nice, I like the warmth to it, but it's kind of like a, something you spray on and just maybe be more relevant. Anyway, Atelier Oblique Moonsai. Moving on to the house of Histoire Parfums. It's 1828 Jules Verne. So this one is a very interesting take on pine with lots of different notes, with citruses, of course, but it features notes of eucalyptus with pine, citruses, nutmeg, cedar, incense, vetiver, pepper, grapefruit, and tangerine. I put this in the list because it features pine, but this is the one that I have to disagree with Jessica the most. I would move this down the list, like somewhere around 15, 16. I don't know why. Well, I guess... I'm a little thrown off with this one. Well, I guess, I guess we could just scratch it because it's not No, really no, no, we don't have to scratch it, but... It's not really a pine fragrance. It's true. It's what, like, do, what do you like about it? Um, I like, I, you know what I like? I like that eucalyptus pine mixed with the cedar. I'm just, and then mixed with that pepper and tangerine. I think that those, those notes that I'm picking out together make something really interesting. I like the element of tangerine and pepper added to those okay. other notes. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's got different tastes, you know? But, you know, my ranking is based on, I put the freshies at the top of my list. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not the, You like more fresh things. I think with pine, my idea of a great pine scent is something that's refreshing for sure. Okay. And perhaps not that really intense bottom of the forest sort of smell. But you know what? I have to totally agree with our selection for number one. Well, Jessica's selection for number one, it's definitely really, really beautiful. It deserves a number one. Although I can probably give it a toss up between Serge Lutens Fianna Guy with this one. But going back to the house of Dasein, it's winter, this one right here. So it's not Winter Nights. Where is Winter Nights? It's right here. Mm -hmm. Winter Nights is the more darker, smokier, but winter is the more frosted pine forest smell. Like imagine the pine trees covered in snow because there's definitely like this white mm. creamy quality about it. So it's blue spruce, black cardamom, forest pine, and French lavender. 
Yeah. What did you like about this? This had just like when I think of a, of a, of a pine, well I guess this is a spruce, when I think of a wintergreen sort of like pine, terpenic fragrance, mm -hmm. this just has what my imagination pictured something to have. Okay. I totally agree with her. It's just really beautiful like a pine forest. It's fresh, snow covered, clean, green, aromatic. Just imagine the trees, the way it smells. Yeah, like if, with you, the creaminess. Took, if you took the pine cones, scrubbed them on your skin, and it actually worked. Something oh, like that. Something right? like that. <laughs> yeah. But then made it more obviously more perfumey. Totally. Anyway, Design Winter. Have you guys tried it? Really, really beautiful fragrance, guys. Check it out. And that's the list for you, the ranked list. This is ranked by Jessica. She did the ranking. I agree with most of them and disagree with some of them. But I think she did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to make the ranking for this list. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Guys, th thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Let me know if you are fans of these fragrances. Let me know also if there are any other pine, fir, or spruce fragrances that I should check out for another list next year. Other than that, uh, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye.